up next on Profiles in Caring, presented by Equitable Life and Casualty. We'll take you to Bryn de Amor, or Branch of Love. It's part health spa, part environmental education project, and it benefits the locals of a rural area of Costa Rica. Profiles in Caring is next. GoodTube, a website devoted to videos on good people, good works, and good news about the nonprofit world. Grab your video camera and share the inspirational stories of your charitable group. And each month, the best nonprofit videos uploaded to GoodTube will win a grant of $1,000 and be featured on the internationally syndicated TV program, Profiles in Caring. It's free, it's easy, it's GoodTube. The following Profiles in Caring is made possible through generous support from Equitable Life and Casualty, committed to caring. Welcome to Profiles in Caring. I'm Kimberly Perkins. You've heard the term ecotourism, take a trip, learn about the area, lend a hand, improve the environment. Well, we found an interesting example of ecotourism tucked inside a rainforest in Costa Rica, and our Doug Jardine couldn't wait to check it out. It is what most travel to Costa Rica to see. Beautiful beaches, immaculately clean cities like the capital of San Jose. Day trips to a rainforest or a couple of days trip to a dry rainforest to better appreciate white-faced capuchin monkeys. And if you're lucky, one of those incredible Central American sunsets. But as our world focuses on becoming more green, there is now another option in northwestern Costa Rica, a legitimate chance at eco-tourism, a legitimate chance at becoming one with nature. Welcome to Profiles in Caring, coming to you from Costa Rica, Pejije, Costa Rica, standing outside a project known as Brin. Locals will tell you this is an oasis in the middle of nowhere, is it? You're about to find out as soon as we take a step inside. It's a mixture of three languages. Brin is French for uh, a vine, a string, a strand that connects. The more uh, the D is Italian, and amor is uh, love in Spanish. So it basically reflects that for both nature and for mankind, we will mesh into a, a strand, uh, an ivy climber, or a uh, and uh, it will have an essence based upon the heart and love. Uh, love for nature, love for fellow mankind. We're sitting here right in the middle of your dream, aren't we? Yes, you are. How did you find this place? This place uh, was known to me since 1984 when it was begun to be built. And I became acquainted with the idea of building this place. And I'm also acquainted with the architect, Rolando Barahona Sotela, who designed this as a young man. And uh, it became a, uh, something quite unusual in the middle of the tropical dry forest, which this area is. Tropical dry forest is one that's affected more by the northerly winds that are from the north, obviously. And what they do is they keep the moisture away from uh, this area. And uh, the normal uh, winds here are southerly that bring in the moisture from the Pacific. So it makes this place uh, very green for six months, seven months out of the year, and very dry for six to five months out of the year. But we're in the middle of the dry season, so you won't see this as a tropical lush forest. In the rainy season, you will. It's almost no different from a tropical rainforest, which is 
present more in the southern part of Costa Rica. Still pictures taken during the rainy season do tell and do show the other side of this awe-inspiring place. Awe-inspiring enough and filled with enough almost palpable energy that caught the eye and passion not only of Carlos but of many others, including successful author of The Power of Focus for college students, Andrew Hewitt, who sees Brin de Amor not only as an investment opportunity but as an educational and environmental connector. The education here really begins with healing. You know, we look at the education system of the past and of the, the, the current university. It's very intellectual. It's all intellectual, actually. And we know that to, to really reach higher states of fulfillment, there's more than just our mind. There's our whole body and spirit as well. And therefore, the prerequisite, as I like to say, of education should be healing. And this is where people come and they get healed as well. They're not just learning from great mentors and researchers and apprenticing, they're actually also healing their body. They're healing belief systems, they're healing uh, past traumas, they're healing um, things that are preventing them from being whole. It's much different from just boring books and lecture-based classrooms. It's really about getting your hands dirty and interacting with the wisdom holders, the great teachers and researchers who are the experts in everything from food systems to transportation systems to um, how to create a synergy behind your mind, body and spirit. It's about helping people get to new levels of consciousness, new levels of understanding of the interconnectedness of everything in the world, of how nature is so important for the sustainability of this planet. So it's a place where, where people yearning for something new can come and, and see it and be mentored and be apprenticing under some of the greatest researchers and teachers on this planet. And society's coming at you full tilt, wanting you to conform. Your parents are pushing into jobs, the school system is pushing into a nine to five corporate world. And a lot of us are saying, we don't want that. We've seen what that system does to us. We've seen what it does to the world. We're ready for something new. I think the main reason why I get it is because I remembered to ask myself a question um, midway through my university experience and that question was why. Admittedly so, this is a place unlike any I had ever seen, the proverbial educational spiritual one with nature oasis, what many might call right in the middle of nowhere. But its location was both happenstance and planned. The waterfalls and environmental ambience so kindly provided by Mother Nature, but the actual building, the home, this getaway, unquestionably planned to perfectly blend here at one with nature. Giant water gathering receptacles reaching toward the sky and only a stone's throw from the Lomas Barbulal National Preserve with its home to so many animals including the white-faced capuchin monkeys. When Profiles in Caring continues, how Brinde Amor fits into and gives back to the local economy, ecology and biology.